liberty, please, and just one more time, put your hands together for the young people today. We salute you. We celebrate you. We love you. We encourage you. Bless God for you. Amen. And let's go before God in prayer. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Dear God, once again, we come before you thanking you for the opportunity to be here in this space at this time. We pray now that your Holy Spirit will permeate our hearts and our minds and allow us, dear God, to move closer to you. This is my prayer in Jesus' perfect and holy name. Amen. Join me in the book of Exodus, the third chapter, the seventh through the fourteenth verses. And I will be reading from the New International Version of Exodus, the third chapter, the seventh through the fourteenth verses, where you find these words. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perseites, Hivites, and Jezebites. And now, the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, go! I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be a sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. For just a few moments, that is mine. I want to talk with you from the topic. And God said, I am. And God said, I am. <clears throat> the Sankofa is a mythical Ghanaian bird that is depicted as moving forward while at the same time looking backward. Go back and fetch it is a mantra that it uses to remind us of our faith tradition. As we are moving toward new horizons, we're always building on the faith foundation of our past. Now, as we come together this morning, encouraging our young people and chartering a course for their future, we are really having a Sankofa-like Sunday because we are reminded that whatever success they have or will experience in the future is built upon a spiritual foundation that's already been laid. More importantly, the same God who promised to be there for them in the future is the same God who was there for them, there for their families, there for their ancestors in the past. Somewhere I read, grass withers, flowers fade, but the word of God is forever. That means the same God who can do the impossible of that which is seemingly impossible for you is the same God who already did that which was impossible for Barack Obama. The same God who made a way out of no way for Martin King and Thurgood Marshall is the same God who made a way out of no way for Shadrach, Meshach, and some people call him a bad somebody's Negro. Yeah. Uh, the same God we celebrate every February, a uh, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, God who has brought us thus far on the way is the same God who has always been there for us every month, every year, and every hour whenever we call on God's name. Now watch this. 
years ago, I was pastoring in a rural part of South Louisiana, and I was talking to a brother who was dealing with some issues. He was having a really rough time. This brother said to me, Pastor, with all the stuff I'm going through, I just don't know how to call on God. I mean, what do I call him? What am I supposed to say? I guess the truth of the matter is, different people call on the same God and call him different things at different times. When some people are dealing with problems, they call God El Alim, which means God of strength, God of power. When other people call on the name of God and they need him in the midst of their situation, they call him Emmanuel, which means God uh, is with us. When still other people call on the name of God, when they need him to transcend their situation, they call him Jehovah because it means God who is Lord. Uh, but I've learned over the course of the many times I've had no choice but to get down on my knees. I've learned over the course of my life when I've been in the midst of many, many situations, I have learned that it's much less important what name you call God, but it's much more important that you call on the name of God in the midst of your situation. That's why God said, I am. God said, I am, meaning uh, regardless of what name you call him, I am is my alpha, I am is my omega. I am is my beginning, I am is my end. I am is my sun, I am is my moon. I am is the very air I breathe. That's because God is God. In fact, I once heard somebody in church say, beside God, there is no other. If you hear me saying nothing else this morning as we celebrate our young people on this Sankofa-like Sunday, hear me saying this. Think back about the things God has brought you through. Go back and fetch it. And remember, whatever success lies in your future is all because God was there in your past. That's why God said, I am. When we look at the text now, we're preaching from this early part of the Exodus story where God is revealing God's self to God's people. And these are people who are being oppressed and repressed by a government that treated them in the worst possible ways. Now in dealing with government, that is in dealing with Pharaoh, Moses felt like he was up against a wall in dealing with an impossible situation. That's why God had to teach Moses because Moses didn't have a model to follow. In other words, Moses didn't have a Bible to read. God had to teach Moses that when you're dealing with the hardship or when you're dealing with what seems like an impossible situation, call on the name of God. Now, there's a transition in this text because Moses is learning how not to depend on Moses, but Moses is learning how when it seems like a situation is impossible, that's when you call on God. It's here in verses 7 through 10 that the text tells us God is sensitive to the fact that his people are being oppressed. Stated otherwise, God is sensitive to the fact that circumstances can sometimes seem overwhelming. God is sensitive to the fact that through no fault of your own, sometimes it seems like your situation is just too much to bear. Uh, but God is saying that in the midst of whatever you have to deal with. God has plans for you to get you to the other side of what must seem like a mountain. God has plans for you to get you out of this impossible situation. God says, I have plans for your good and God is promising you a future. Or to paraphrase the songwriter, God is saying, trouble don't last always. And God is saying all you have to do is call on God's name and God will get you through your situation. Just call on the name of God. But watch this. It's important to recognize that this is early in the Exodus narrative. And the Moses we see here is not yet the Moses we will see later. Moses' faith has not yet matured. In other words, the Moses we see here is before the ten plagues of Egypt. We haven't yet seen Moses part the Red Sea, and Moses hadn't gone up to Mount Sinai to get God's Ten Commandments. That means the chapter 3 Moses is just starting out in his faith walk, just like that brother that asked me how to call in the name of God down in Tangible Hoa, Paris, Louisiana. But somebody in church once told me that when you call on God's name, you got to learn how to 
let go and let God. Somebody in church said that if, you are, if you're going to pray, don't worry. And if you're going to worry, you don't need to pray. That's why we see Moses here in verse 11 with what seems like the weight of the world is on his shoulders and he's fighting against what we would call the imposter syndrome. Moses asked God, who am I to bring your people out of Egypt? Translation, who am I to believe I'm actually good enough to get a promotion on my job? Translation for young people, who am I to think I'm actually smart enough to get good grades in school? Or to somebody that's dealing with some foolishness at home, who am I to believe that I can actually excel in life? I don't need you trying to tear me down. The devil is a liar. Nothing or nobody is going to stop me from trying to chase my dreams. Uh, that's why God tells Moses, I will be with you. Meaning, early in this Exodus story, God is saying, put your trust not in man, put your trust in God. Trust God. Now, just like there's a transition in the text, huh? there's also a transition in our time. Uh, the truth of the matter is, black America was traveling to a promised land just like Moses. Black America reached a political promised land and we thought we had arrived. And we started giving more credit to man and stopped giving all the credit to God. In the midst of our comfort, there was an undercurrent, a growing undercurrent of chaos. In the midst of eight years, somebody say eight years. In the midst of eight years of celebration with, uh, can I call him this? No drama, Barack Obama. <laughs> No drama, Barack Obama, because for eight years, there was no scandal in America. Eight years, the budget in America was balanced. For eight years, America had come out of debt. But for, no, during those eight years, there was an undercurrent in America where Bertha Movement got married to the Tea Party. The two of them procreated, and they had an ugly orange-haired child who started wearing funny-looking red hats that said, Make America Great Again. Uh, while we were happy for eight years with the presidency of Barack Obama, the same spirit of bigotry that killed Emmett Till down in Money, Mississippi, rose up again to kill Trayvon Martin in Florida, Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, and Eric Gardner in Staten Island, New York. The same spirit of hatred that killed Cheney Goodman and Schwerner down in Philadelphia, Mississippi, is the same spirit of hatred that killed Ahmaud Arbery in Brunswick, Georgia, Breonna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky, and George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh, but whenever there's an issue, there's an answer. Whenever there's a problem, there's a solution if you put your trust and God. That means the same God who brought us through what seemed like an impossible situation before we voted in 2020 is the same God who will bring us through what may seem like an impossible situation as we prepare to vote here in 2024. Oh, every now and again, all of us ought to feel a little bit like Moses because sometimes it can seem like our situation is just too much to bear. Oh, that's when you have to remember, as in go back and fetch it, remember the same God that turned Martin's dream into America's reality in the past is the same God that is blessing you, the same God that is right here with you right now, and the same God that will be with you in your future. Oh, the same God who spoke truth to power for Moses in Egypt is the same God who's going to cause a ceasefire on the Gaza Strip. He's the same God who can fix the immigration problem at the U.S.-Mexico border and the same God who can restore happiness in your household. Can I tell you what my mama used to say? My mama used to say he's the same God who's a doctor in the hospital room. And he's the same God who's a lawyer in a courtroom. Oh, we can all learn so much from Moses in this text because we all should remember that in the midst of what is otherwise an impossible situation, don't call on the name of man, call on the name of God. Go back and fetch it and remember, God said, I am. Now, just like there's a transition in the text, we also see God's movement in this text. We see God's grace in this text because God is giving us all hope 
in the midst of despair. God is turning a frown upside down and God is flipping a script as God is trying to teach Moses to call on his name because God can fix any situation. All we have to do is call on the one who says, I am. Oh, instead of relying on ourselves in the midst of life situations, rely on the one who says I am because I am can always make a way. I am is the alpha. I am is the omega. I am is the beginning and I am is the end. I am can fix your situation because I am, well, I am is I am. I am is the one who did the impossible back then and I am is still the one who can do the impossible right about now. Oh, I am is the one who protected you when he parted the Red Sea. I am is the one who provided for you when he dropped manna from heaven. I am is the only one who will guide you in getting from where you are to where God will have you to be. Oh, I am will be with you in the midst of your situation if you're willing to just put your trust in the one called I am. Oh, the good news here is that if you believe God is the same from yesterday, today, and forever, that means you also to believe that the same God who made a way out of no way for Moses in Egypt is the same God who will make a way out of no way for you right now. Oh, the same God who spoke justice for Martin in the South is the same God who spoke equality for Obama all around the world. It's no secret what God can do. What God has done for others, God can also do for you. Yes, we can all learn something from the lesson God teaches Moses in this text because no matter how impossible things might seem, no matter how difficult your situation might be, call on the name of God in the midst of your situation. Oh, call on God as in Jehovah Rapha. Call on God as Jehovah Jireh. Call on God as a Jehovah Shalom. Regardless of how you call the name of God, just remember to call on God's precious name. Why? Because God is a healer. Why? Because God is a provider. God is a conqueror. God is a deliverer. God is a sustainer. And God is God all by God's self. Oh, regardless of how you call in the name of God, can I tell you how I call in his name? I call on him many names, but my favorite name for God is the God that Paul calls him, a name above every name. I like to call him by the name of Jesus, because somewhere I read that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bend and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is Lord. Call in his name when you're in the midst of a situation, because God will never let you down. Call in his name when you're wrestling with things, because God will be there for you. God will provide for you. God will bless you. God is the one who said, call on my name, because I am who I am.